What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Don't Give Up the Ship podcast. This is episode 70, uh, where I will be talking about wisdom uh, with everybody's favorite now retired business mate chief, Jeff Bayless. It was something that uh, I, I kind of I won't go too far into the the whys behind it because I, I brief it all right at the beginning. But um, something I've been thinking about for a while in relation to it, like it started with thinking about is there like a minimum time requirement somebody should be in the Navy before making chief or even before ascending to any type of a leadership role. And then based on that, it was like I was focused on experience. And then I kind of arrived at wisdom being the the actual thing that I was trying to get at. Uh, and so it's just something that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, Jeff was he's a guy that gets into these types of, of things in a way that helps me understand better like just the way that his mind works and how i mean he's incredibly well read and incredibly intelligent and experienced as well but um he's got a lot of wisdom it was kind of the, like the one of the guys that jumped out at me in my mind when i thought about talking about this so there were uh some small technical issues that you may notice as we go through uh that <laughs> at the end we we're joking about jeff going to get a new laptop uh just because it's pretty old and it was basically uh, the service I use has a video function now, so it's more demanding on each person's machine to be able to do both. And uh, it's kind of like a Zoom setting. But anyway, uh, it, there were some connectivity issues at the very end where we lost connection, had to do some troubleshooting, get back on. So there's like a couple of hiccups along the way, but uh, uh, the content is all there. Uh, and I think you guys will enjoy this. So uh, check it out. So yeah, man, like we talked about the other day. So like the I was... It started with a conversation with Nick, and it was a while ago on a podcast about um, how long somebody needs to be in before they make chief. Like, what's the minimum required time if there is one? Like, what what makes the most sense? Should there be a minimum? Like, there used to be a minimum time service requirement, and then there was like early a quota for early promotions and stuff. And now there really isn't. Like, you, I I've seen an article in the Navy Times that what were a DC. Uh, guy, a, a damage controlman. Sorry, <laughs> I, I woke up an hour ago. Uh, uh, he he made chief <laughs> in like five and a half years, and you're like, how is that product? And like, there's and me and Nick. Nick's pushback was effectively like, there are exceptions, and if they meet all the requirements set forth by their warfare community or or what whoever's making the requirements, and they're ev- and they're selected by a selection board, then they're ready to be a chief. And like I, in my mind, I'm like, well, then maybe we need to change that criteria. But there's exceptions to every rule because Nick made it in like seven years, I want to say. And he's like, obviously, right. awesome. Like he's he and I, obviously I'm not qualified to evaluate an EOD tech. It's not like I've seen him perform at his job, but um, I'm really confident he's doing a great job. And it's so it's like otherwise he wouldn't advance and he wouldn't continue to be put in the positions that he's put in. And just talking to him, I do feel like I'm pseudo qualified to evaluate him as a leader and he's amazing and i've seen that the, these guys in real right. life mostly nuclear trained guys some there's some other submarine ratings that promote real fast and you see these guys promote and it feels like it's before they're ready and i would even uh, i've said it before i even feel like i probably promoted like maybe right on time maybe a little early like i had a rough first year um but I was in examining that and, and Nick gave some really great pushback about why he thought that it was OK. And then I started thinking about like, well, is it because you're painting with a really broad brush by saying that I want to institute a minimum time and service requirement that would probably filter out people that would have promoted too early and allow them to get a little more experience. Um but also probably hold some people back. Like you're painting with a really broad brush and you're going to end up there. There's going to be exceptions. I rule. So you could build mechanisms in for that, where there's like, like meritorious promotion is expanding a, a lot. So it's like the, obviously the people on the deck plate and the, and that commanding officer or reporting senior are the most qualified to evaluate that sailor for readiness to enter the mess. And then if they think they're ready and either the meritorious promotion quote like criteria are met or a selection board selects them then it is what it is but i kind of started to look at look at myself and my uh thought process and say based on what nick said and what some other people have said 
about like, well, is it, I don't think like, is it a time and service thing that I'm concerned about? Or is it like, cause I'm looking at it. Th- I was originally looking at it as experience. I was like, I, how do you have enough experience as a five and a half year chief to do what you need to do as a chief? But then I was like, well, okay, like what do we need to do as chiefs? And then I started analyzing that. And I'm like, so if you're at the most junior level as a chief, and you're going to be a division chief, like, do you need all the experience in the world or do you need enough to be a good leader of a, a division of sailors and some like tr- go, going through all that stuff? And I kind of arrived at like, I'm not actually concerned about uh, experience or the, t- the type of stuff that you typically look at when you're like, is this person ready to be a chief? I'm like, uh, my parents said something to me about, um, that I was wise or that I had a lot of wisdom or whatever. And I was like, that's, that's what I'm like. Right. That's what I was looking for. Like, I just, I didn't articulate it correctly. And so I was like, it was basically like a, do they have the wisdom required to successfully navigate all the challenges that they're going to face as a chief? Like they're going to face like, like no doubt in my mind, they're going to get confronted by these things. Sure. And so it's like, I, like basically wanted to look at that and, and kind of, I don't know, just like dissect that a little bit. It's almost like this is a very open, like, I just want to talk it over and kind of like discover some of the things myself, even while we're talking about it, where it's like, what is wisdom? How is it gained? When is it gained? Like, how is how would we even be able to evaluate it? I, like, and we talked about a lot of it the other day when we were on the phone, but it's just like that type of stuff I wanted to get at. And I wanted to put it out there as like a like a thought experiment and a little bit of an informative tool on like the like this is the type of stuff you should be worried about. And like, I think when we all when we talk about experience in relation to the tool set of a chief, we're really talking about wisdom, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, man, a lot comes up. Uh, I actually had, since we had talked, I I jotted down some notes and just kind of, this is how I do on my podcast too, is like, I'll just kind of jot down like in bullet format. How how many books, how many books am I going to have to read after this? Yeah. Just one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna have to, I think I, I just, talked about just it one book. Day. Okay. I, I, I'm ready to, I'm ready to take notes. Okay. <laughs> well, since you, you brought up books, uh, you know, what I, what I, what, what comes to mind is Ray Dalio's principles. Uh, Ray Dalio was an investment, uh, okay. mastermind, uh, that basically funded this or started this, uh, company, which it, it, it's escaping me right now, but the, 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 you can Google principles, Ray Dalio, and it'll give you a PDF format of a, uh, just an outline of what the book is about. If you don't want to, you know, download on audible or read it. Um, I strongly recommend just checking out that excerpt is what it's called. Uh, Ray Dalio's principles excerpt. And basically the, the, the crux of that book was that, uh, in, in, in a, in any environment that you're, uh, creating some sort of, uh, workplace where you want people to be leaders, right? You have to create a meritocracy. And so what a meritocracy is, is like people are promoted based on their merit, right? Not on their time that they've been there, their tenure. Uh, and it, it is a civilian, you know, bank type environment, right? But it can yeah. translate to the military as well, where, you know, we're, we're promoting people based but, on their but merit. But Jeff, right? the military how long is a meritocracy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quote unquote. Right. Um, but so, yeah, you know, yeah. where I go with that is it, saying that somebody needs to have a certain amount of time. Uh, I don't know that that is really, I don't know that that lands with me perfectly. Like, not, like you were saying, there's an exception to every rule, yeah. you know? Yes. There's an exception to every rule. There's, there's someone. So for example, you can be 40 years old, uh, myself, right? I'm 40 years old, right? But I've had this X amount of experience in 40 years. Now, what's my actual uh, wisdom age, right? Because of the things that I've gone through and and learned from, right? Now, if you didn't learn from it, then I guess you're you're just, you know, you're stuck at a younger age as far as wisdom is concerned. But I guess what I'm trying to say is you can pack a lot of wisdom in a short amount of time if if you're receptive to it. Does time necessarily always equate to wisdom? Not always. You know, I don't think it does. I think sometimes you could be right. 20 years in the Navy and not have learned anything, 
you know, <laughs> you could, you could just be coasting through, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> make, 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 make first class, right. Uh, an, a, a, a grade where you can retire, right. Just do your job. Uh, you know, show up on time, wear your uniform, all these things, you know, get promotable evals, make first class, get out of the Navy after 20 years, nothing wrong with that. Right. But did you gain a whole lot of wisdom right. during that time? Maybe, uh, may, maybe not. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah. I guess some other things that come to mind. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you're the subject matter expert, right, that's going to require you as a chief, you're the subject matter expert. Right. And so you may have someone that's working for you that has more time in the Navy than you. Right. And so that's a, that's a sticking point. That's a, that's a, uh, something that you're going to have to navigate and have the communication skills. Uh, you know, and I talk a lot about the difference between soft skills and hard skills, right? Hard, hard skills are your ability to do your job. That's like, I know how to work ohms in, ohms in G. I know how to work R supply. I know how to do 3M. I know if you're a wrench turner, you know how to turn the wrench basically, right? Your soft skills is kind of like what we're doing right now. We're, we're talking about hard, hard topics, right? We're, we're navigating uh, treacherous waters, like to try to figure things out and come to a resolution. It's yeah. negotiation, it's communication. Uh, it's it's your ability to effectively communicate and articulate uh, the, the status of your division, your department, uh, your mission, whatever that thing is, right? So this is why soft skills are so important. It, if, if someone has maybe a little bit of a deficit uh, because they've only been in the Navy five and a half years, which I would say is very challenging to make chief in five and a half years and, you know, be able to have the hard and soft skills required right. to effectively lead a division. But it is possible, right? It is possible. And we should promote people based on their yeah. merit. That's, that's kind of my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what's interesting to me is like the, that that guy could have very well been like completely prepared and ready based on whatever came before, like whatever, because we talked a little bit about the experiences of like it, it, age and experience doesn't isn't necessarily correlated with wisdom. But like, I mean, I would say the experiences are like the life experience, but like just experience on the job and in the Navy doesn't necessarily correlate to the wisdom required to be successful in that role. And so like the it, it is possible Agreed. to have somebody come into that that the service and not even be like one of the I've, I've had a bunch of sailors and I'm sure you have too. like they come in the Navy and they're like 27, 28, 29, 30, you know, and so they have more life experience. And so that the, the maturity that comes from a little bit or hopefully comes from a little bit more life experience um, leads them to be a little more successful faster. But even like there's junior sailors that come in that are, are they come in at 18 and they're just different. Like they went through a different set of life experiences. They, went through a different set of like real life challenges. A lot of times I feel like it, it correlates with suffering or like a really, really high level of stress. And they just, yeah. they're, they're cut from a different cloth. You know what I mean? Like I had a kid on one of my boats that was homeless before he joined the Navy. And it's just like, you never, like he was a quiet kid. He, uh, real nice. Sometimes he would get frustrated with stuff, but the vast majority of the time that kid was just quietly getting after it because he understood like the difference, the stark difference between what came before and what he has now. And so like the viewpoint I might have of being underway on nuclear power on my first submarine, like, Oh, this sucks. I'm stressed out. I never get to sleep, blah, blah, blah. But, like I'm not sleeping on a sidewalk. <laughs> like I'm not sleeping on a park yeah, right. bench and it's cold and I'm hungry and I don't have any idea where my next meal. Yeah. You know I mean, like, you just you're going to have a way yeah. different perspective um, and, and a different set of tools for dealing with that stress and dealing with the adversity that comes along with submarining. And, and it's that in and of itself is extremely stressful and, and challenging and whatever. So you're going to gain that over time. But and so is anything in the Navy, like the first tour and, and whatever. Like, I feel like most of these people gain a certain amount of that as they're going through their career. But like there are people that come in that are just better equipped so it's like they're further along in their progression just by virtue of their life experience. Well, it also, and so absolutely. And it also, it also begs the question, uh, it, it begs the question, you know, are you ever really ready? You know, do you, are you ever at a point where, yeah. you know, okay, I've got this figured out. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that's why yeah, chief's initiation yeah. is what it is. That's why 
you know, that's why they send LDOs and warrant officers right. to knife and fork school, right? Because the 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 truth is, the truth is you're <laughs> not ready. We just see potential in you that you can be ready. You know what I mean? That's what the system is designed for. Right, um, right. I would also, you know, maybe, I would also think that it may be beneficial to have a physical board, you know, for instead of everything being an admin yeah, uh, yeah. process for chiefs, chief selection, right? So, you know, for LDOs and warrants, you have to go in front mm. of a few people that have either gone through what you're about to go through, or, you know, they're going to judge you on your character, your ability mm. to present yourself, your understanding of what you're applying for. You know, I wrote that article for uh, proceedings and uh, Paul interviewed me and, and, you know, so not mm. to go down that whole uh, LDO warrant package, should you get a commission or stay uh, enlisted. But the point is yeah, yeah, yeah. for that program, you have to actually We've talk to somebody already. where they go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like this guy yeah, yeah. or gal, uh, has the potential to do what we think we're asking them to do. Right. So I, I think that it's a, it's a good question. I don't know that it's just sheerly by the numbers, uh, if it, if it's feasible or, you know, yeah. possible, but man, like, I'll pose it as a question, like how beneficial would that be just to sit down in a room of like a mass chief, a senior chief and a chief and say, Hey man, you're putting in this chief package. Let's have a physical board. Like, are you ready? Do you know what you're applying for? Are you really uh, yeah. committed to being a chief in the mess? Yeah. You know? So I, I pose that as a question. Uh, I think, you know, yeah, I think it would even, be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, th- I think it would be tremendously beneficial to have, actual boards like I, I've had uh, friends that are in the army talk to me about how they and I don't know if they still do it that way but they definitely did at a certain point where they would have to go to a board of senior NCOs I, I don't know exactly how it's structured I don't know who's there but it's they go and they're like in their dress uniform it's like kind of sort of structured as a uh, like kind of we do a, like of the quarter of the year boards but more I think it's a larger panel and they're yeah they're, it, they're interviewing them essentially for the job and um, and, and I don't know if it, it would necessarily need to be structured the exact way. Maybe it's like a bunch of separate interviews, like interview appraisals for LDO, like where they go and there's certain people designated and they have to go sit down and do an interview with them. And then they fill out an interview appraisal form that goes into their package. And then a guy like me at the selection board sits exactly. down and goes over it and goes over those interview appraisal forms. I, I don't know, man. Like, but I feel like a lot of value could be added in the subjective yes. evaluation of someone's readiness which i don't even like you said i don't know if the, it's the right word like potential for leadership or how how many how much tools do they have in certain areas because like i don't know we like to quantify everything and put it in a box and say like on a 4.0 scale how ready are you to <laughs> lead on the deck plate or whatever <laughs> and it's like I, I don't know that you can do that effectively but like it's like you we got to do something. And I think that it could be a very thorough like process where maybe it's not a numbered metric style system. It's just like a I sit down with Sailor X and then when I'm done, I write, you know, a thousand words on their readiness to be a chief. And based on what I observed during that interview, and it could be a very like subjective thing where I'm I'm recording like literally what I saw and what jumped out at me and what I thought might be a weak area. And it would, there'd have to be an understanding that I'm allowed to write things about weak areas on like the enlisted evaluation system. But, um, but yeah, I think it'd be really, really beneficial. Um, I think, I think it's, I think it's actually, I think it should be a requirement, you know, because so for example, you could promote somebody to chief where, you know, okay, they, they had a 3.8 eval and, they knew they knew everything technically. They understood, uh, like I said earlier, Ooh. they understand the hard skills required to do their job. Right? That's great. Okay. Now I'm going right. to put this chief petty officer in front of the commanding officer to brief uh, an evolution or an inspection or uh, you know, to basically just to effectively communicate in a large group of people. If you can't do that, or if you can't stand in front of your division yeah. of 35 people and put out orders, even though you were good at 3M, you were good at mm. uh, maintenance, you're good at supply, you're good yeah. at, you know, you're a, you're a wrench turner, you're 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 a nuts and bolts guy or gal. That's great. We yeah. need those. We need everybody. But if you can't get in front of the captain or the admiral or 
the Commodore or yeah. your division and effectively communicate, you're not going to be the most productive chief petty officer in the Navy or, or leader in general. Um, there's yeah. a, there's a guy that I work with now in uh, ship repair. That's a retired uh, chief petty officer. And he, you know, I think he made it in like 17 or 18 years and retired at 20 or 21, you know, mm-hmm. and he's a great guy. He knows all the information. He can track ship repair. He knows exactly what's going on with the tanks and the, and the, the voids and, you know, all of his work items. He knows exactly what's going on with mm-hmm. it. When he has to stand up and brief the ship, he struggles, man. Uh, you know, he, he struggles and therefore it makes it look like things aren't going as well as they are, you know? Uh, and so I think, I guess what I'm trying to say is that's an important part about being a leader. It's not just knowing the information, it's being able to effectively put it out. And, 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 and also, you know, you want people to want to work for you, right? I don't want people that I just run around and tell them like, Hey, you do this. Hey, you do that. Hey, this isn't right. I may be exactly yeah. correct that it isn't right, but that's not how you get people to want to work for you. Right. I want people that want to be a part of the team that I'm building, right? And if I can't effectively communicate, then I'm, I'm going to fail as a leader. And so I think that would, if we had like some sort of physical board, it would be easier to judge or gauge someone's ability to effectively communicate as a chief petty officer, even if they are a subject matter expert. I know everything about 3M. Great. Can you tell me about it? <laughs> Can you make me want to do it for you? If yeah, not, for real. <laughs> do you deserve the anchors? Do you deserve the yeah. khakis? I don't. I don't think I, so. Yeah, yeah. I w- I was talking to. I did a podcast yesterday uh, with a guy that um, he's actually going to start working with me on some stuff with the podcast. But we were talking about um, kind of like the someone's readiness to be a chief. And, and he we got to a point in his personal story where he mentioned that uh, the CMC or, or chief or whoever involved in this in this experience that he had was a clown because um, he was still personally like hurt by the way that things went down. And I, and I kind of stopped him and was like, look, personal accountability is a thing. I, I, I get it. Like I'm I'm a I'm a fan of like making sure that we also talk about that even though if i'm the leader that's responsible for that thing i should take responsibility for it and whatever actions and effects like happen uh, when i'm in charge but um i try to never find myself in a place where it turns into like a personal attack like that and so i said to be fair we exist in a system where even though like you can look at somebody that's in a cmc billet and be like you should know better they also came up in a system where they got no formal leadership development until the senior enlisted Academy, if they even had to attend, which most, most were not quite there where any of it's even required anyway. Um, and so like, were they ever right. equipped with the tools that they need to do all those things correctly? Like, were they ever put in a position where um, they were trained on how to stand up in front of a group of people and effectively communicate? Like you mentioned, like, were they ever put in a position where they were challenged to do all these things and equipped with the leadership tools that are required to effectively do this job? Or are we just assuming that they're like an authority on the topic because they've like risen through a quota driven system to the position that they're in? Like, I don't know if it's entirely fair to bus drive these people um, based on their not like living up to some really high standard I have that we never prepared them for again, like there's a personal accountability piece where they should have been hopefully self-aware enough to, to recognize those gaps. And that's the thing. Like, I don't know that these people even think they have gaps. I would, I would venture to guess pride is preventing them from recognizing that fact, but, um, and the, and the validation process Ooh, of getting promoted yeah. a whole bunch of times and, and don't, putting don't on a cookie and on, like doing all this. Don't things. get me started like, on I, pride. Oh, good Lord, man. Like, I, I don't know that we've ever done the things required to make sure those people know what they need to know and have the tools that they need to succeed. But we're also simultaneously judging them for not being successful in that role. And it's like that's dangerous because it's like, I think that, it, I mean, it should start way, way earlier. I'm encouraged by some of the like, and like ELD courses that are coming online and all that other stuff. But 
I mean, it's going to take a long time to kind of breed that out of the system if the end like ELD thing sticks around and is successful. And it's just like, yeah, I, I kind of find myself in that place where we talk about those things and like, yeah, I, I don't think they're necessarily like ready, quote unquote, to be a chief if they can't do those things. But we also have to put them in a position where they're learning those tools. And I think like a board or even like a separate a bunch of separate stages that we call a board where they have to go like um, maybe they go before a board of some CMCs, but then they have to like go talk to the captain and the Commodore too, and do like an interview style thing where, so they're put in those yeah. positions and they're standing in front of the, the man or woman wearing the command at C pin and have to uh, like mock brief a thing. And that CO is like challenging them on things and asking Absolutely. questions and where's the instruction and stuff like that. Yeah, man. You know, yeah, I think I think that's great, it, it, and also, you know, I think it may help to overcome some people that have shortfalls, right? So maybe you didn't have, uh, you know, the prerequisite uh, boxes checked for things that are we are requiring for you to be a chief. Like on paper, you you have some shortfalls, right? But I hate saying, but I should have said, and <laughs> maybe you have some shortfalls and, and uh, <laughs> your ability to lead people will overcome that. Right. It, you know, your ability to yeah, get people, yeah. you know, you'll get smart on it real quick because you're a fast learner. You're, you're a smart uh, guy or gal. Like you're, right. I have faith that even though you don't know these particular things because you've been assigned to these different commands or units or whatever, after an interview, I can tell you that this person is sharp. I, I can see the charisma. I can see that, you know, you're a fast learner. You're a good communicator. I, I'm going to give you a shot. I think you can overcome. Uh, whereas if it's just on paper, you know, it's hard to tell if someone's actually ready because, yeah. you know, the paper may not line up with your ability to actually yeah. come in and take charge and, and, and <laughs> learn what you need to learn. Right. 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 Well, then we get into truth and reporting and like the selection board process, because I'm still it's going to take me a minute to really construct an outline that I feel comfortable with to kind of share what I can about my selection board uh, experience. But like I can tell you that tr just truth and reporting by itself, like the primary document I have in front of me to judge a sailor's readiness to be selected to to chief is the enlisted evaluation. And I, I like I can tell you that almost no one is accurately reporting someone's performance in block 43. And it's just like it's painful. Oh, right. And then you get into the weirdness of the mechanics of the existing system and then they're not doing that correctly either. And then it's like you get this real vague block 43 that uh, explains that they're a really great guy or gal. And it's like, yeah, OK, but what did they do? What was the impact? What was whatever? And so that it's just it's super the whole system is convoluted and like not you, you're just the whole time I was there. I didn't feel like we were even coming close to hitting the mark. You know what I mean? Like I, I was honestly like angry for most of my selection board experience because I felt like like not I can't definitively say the wrong people were selected. I have that fear. Um, and it's like. It just based on the experience I had when I was there and the mechanics of the system, I I came away with like an anger that I don't think we advocated for the sailors careers in the best way possible. Like, I don't think that we are doing the best possible job we can to make sure the right people are being promoted. And I was freaking furious the whole time mm. I was there. I like I routinely was walking out of the building and like pacing back and forth to calm down because i was just like i'm gonna lose it like i'm gonna start yelling at somebody and it's not even their fault like it's like they didn't create the system it's just like right. i'm extremely frustrated that this is the best we can do really and there was this weird self-congratulatory mood because they had recently revised a bunch of stuff and they were just so convinced that they were getting it right and i'm just like this isn't even close this is like it's not even close and I think it's just, you know, a lot of it's the you're a stick in the mud as far as like, this is how we've always done it. And like, so you're just 
they've improved upon the this is how we've always done it so they're just like patting themselves on the back and i'm just like i they're human i understand that they're right. their hearts in the right place and they're trying to do the best they can but i'm just looking at it like disgusted with the result more than anything you know what i mean like not there's a lot of awesome people there in millington that are trying to get after it and trying to do the right thing and um, and I like there may be some stuff I just don't understand. I'm not like a Millington and, and I need to get somebody like that on to really go through some of that stuff. Um, I'm not a I, I, yeah, like, I do. don't understand yeah. like the huge picture view. I, I'm sure there's a bunch I don't know, but I'm having a real hard time trying to envision like what piece of information I'm going to be provided by one of those people that justifies that process because it was like. It just wasn't, and and it's. I was only on my panel, like so. I maybe a bunch of other panels are doing a way better job. Maybe we just sucked. I don't know. Like it's it's tough. I'm gonna have to talk to some other board members as well that did different boards. Like maybe we were just bad at it. I, I like I don't know, man. It's it's really. But the way I don't know, there's definitely some stuff about the way the system is set up that I'm just like, we're not we're not doing the best we can. We're really not. Like I think we're. I think we're settling for um, this idea that we've this is the ceiling of what we can accomplish based on like the resources and time that we have. And I'm just like, come on, man, like this is not the best we can do, especially in a in a world where you could hold a freaking selection board on Zoom like you could you could use all the tools and technology we have like available to us to uh reduce the demand on like hey i gotta get all these people like like because based on schedule and and mission demands and everything else are you getting the best possible people in the room at that selection board i don't know man maybe maybe not but like if you had a lot more availability based on doing it remotely would you get better people (laughs) like would you get more qualified people that because in my mind i'm looking at it like there are certain things. So like when we do the advancement exam readiness review stuff for our rate, it's like I want subject matter experts there. I want people with like a lot of experience, a lot of level of knowledge that are really immersed in the rate. Like I don't want to pull a senior chief from some out of rate billet or that's a chief of the boat that's not even thinking about CSS stuff. I want somebody that's like in it. So I want like ISIC and TICOM level CSs or like Navy food management team because they're teaching it and they're in it or like even like an A school, a very senior A school instructor to be the ones that come down there and write that exam. So it's like there's a we try to screen it in that way where it's like I don't want just some random guy or gal come in and write in the exam. I want somebody with the right tools and experience that are really immersed in it and have demonstrated a high level of knowledge and and comprehension to go write that advancement exam. And so it's kind of, I kind of look at it the same way. Like I want like break glass in case of emergency master chief, like the go Joe, like Navy super master yeah. chief that is like also a, a rating expert to go be the one at the board selecting chiefs. And I don't know if that, how, if and how they well, screen yeah, it exactly. Sort of related- Maybe they have a great process, but yeah, yeah. Well, and like to relate it back to wisdom is like, are those people wise enough, right? Just because they have the two stars, right? Yeah. Are are they wise enough to make the correct yeah. selection? You know what I mean? Or just because you have a certain rank, you know, I'm kind of putting in the opposite spectrum, right? The, the yin right. and yang, like going on the other side of the uh, of the the shadow yeah. here. You know, just because you have the rank, does that mean that you are wise enough to select someone that? you know, is deserving or, or maybe isn't deserving. Right. Uh, and you know, I think too, one thing that we should probably consider too, is like no other civilian military place will you get selected for something without some sort of interview. And part of that too, I mean, we talked about your ability to, (laughs) you know, effectively communicate, but it's like you mentioned integrity, right. And what you're talking about is the integrity of the system. Right. But also, I think it's important to have some of these other things that it's, it's part of their life, right? Like, are you married? Do you have kids? Are you faith based? Do you, are you a continual learner? Do you do you like to read? You know, are, are you? Are, I'm not saying you have to be faith. I mean, you could be totally agnostic and not married. I'm not. I'm not saying that's yeah, required. Yeah, that's but a it little just, dangerous. It paints, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying it. it 
it paints the picture a little bit better for what kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. person you. you are, right? So so I'm not saying, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely not saying anything is a requirement per se, but it just paints all this nuanced area. Right. It, it paints a better picture for what kind of person you are. Do you have integrity? Are you going to do the right thing? Now, you know, I can see this on paper that you've checked all these boxes uh, and, and we want to get the right people that have the right wisdom that can, you know, be a good judge of your character, right? In this short 15 minutes, we have to say, mm-hmm. hey, this guy or gal, you know, seems like a pretty good person, right? Because we, you know, it, it just sparked something in my mind when you said something yeah. about integrity of the system. I was thinking about what about integrity of the person, right? Like, what about the, you know, making sure that that person has morality, right? As best you can in the 15 minutes you have or whatever. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I just, I think that's, that's huge. And maybe, maybe we don't talk about that enough. You know, we talk about, yeah. is this person a subject matter expert? Is this person qualified? Has this person been to the right ships? Has this person, uh, you know, been to senior enlisted academies to, to become a, a chief of the boat or a CMC? Like, have you checked all these black and white boxes? Uh, but you historically cheat on your wife and you drink alcohol to extreme every day. Uh, you know, it's like all of these things, yeah. you know, yeah. I think that it, it should be part, it, it shouldn't be just so black and white because nothing in life is black and white, bro. I mean, everything has some little form of nuance, some shadow work. Right. Uh, there's another book on shadow work I could recommend, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I just, I think it's, we're not doing ourselves, uh, enough. We're not, we're not doing our, our, our Navy, uh, right by just keeping it in the black and white because there's always a shadow. There's always some sort of color that, that needs to be painted. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, to your point, you know, the, the integrity piece, it, it's hard to prove, uh, but it's, it's, it, it's easy to, uh, I hate to say make an assumption cause you, re, you should never really operate under assumptions, but uh, you know, a reasonable person well, yeah. can have a conversation and make the assumption that that person is relatively a good human being yeah. and deserves to uh, be in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I don't even, it's like not even an assumption. It's just a judgment that I'm qualified to make. Like, I don't think, I think we look at subjectivity as a bad thing too often where it's like everybody wants everything Ooh. to be objective and, and like qualified somehow with metrics and it's like i don't think subjectivity is bad because there's so much nuance to everything that we do and it's like we want to pretend that it's not even there and it's like why like maybe we just educate people with and provide them with the tools to to understand that nuance like and be able to have the types of conversations we have on this podcast all the time where it's like you take the time to critically think about this and analyze this and and just talk about it and that's why i say like if we did interviews which i think we should it, I don't want to see a bunch of like 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, like because the system will inevitably devolve into what like the LDO thing is where it's like if it's not all five O's, there's a problem like, OK, so if I'm not perfect, Absolutely. there's a problem like I'm a human being. And so I don't understand why we can consi- we consistently attack subjectivity. It's like there's a lot of stuff between the lines that I feel like is very valuable that we it's like almost like we pretend it's not there and we ignore it. I feel like we need to take the time to look at those Bro, things because I think we were, it's a lot more important. If we were it's like a, the connective tissue. It's like, I, it's a lot more important than you think it is. If we were, if, if we were in a room right now, I'd be giving you like a big bro hug. Here's a virtual bro hug. <laughs> you're, you're preaching, like you're singing my favorite yeah. song right here, man. Like, you know, I say this all the time. Yeah, there you go. That's funny. <laughs> you know, all the time, man. It's like everybody thinks everything <laughs> is so objective. And we like to say, like, follow the black and white. And I agree, yeah. we should follow the black and white. And, right. not but, and there's a lot of subjectivity and, to everything. Yeah. Now, for example, yeah, if I right. get pulled over by a police officer, I've got tattoos on my hands. I've got full sleeves tattoos. It's four o'clock Ooh. in the morning. I'm going to work. Uh, right. or, well, it, regardless of the time of yeah. day, but it's just a different scenario for me than it would be say for my wife, if she got pulled over, you know, uh, right. I, to, to paint the picture that, okay, the law is the law or the black and white is the black and white. It's that's, yeah. that's ignorance really, not because always, everything yeah. is a negotiation. <laughs> everything right. is a, a communication. Everything is subjective. Everything. I got it. We have black and white, but guess what? That's what ORM is for. That's how we deviate from the black and white. We say, this is a risk I'm willing to assume to accomplish the mission, to get to the end state, right? And so to say, 
okay, there's no subjectivity. Everything is black and white. You're, you're operating in a vacuum. You're, you're completely, uh, you're ignoring in, in a, in a state of ignorance really that yeah. everything is nuanced. Everything right. has some communication. Everything has some conversation, some negotiation, some, yeah. uh, you're trying, you know, this is why the word, the word manipulate gets a, gets a bad rap. It's got a bad connotation to say like, I'm manipulating mm-hmm. the situation, but every communication you have is a manipulation of the other person. You're trying to convince them of your opinion or of your thought process with an open right. mind, hopefully to right. new ideas. Right. Uh, but again, there goes subjectivity. Um, uh, man, like again, just bro hug on that. Like that's my favorite subject. Like yeah. one of, uh, other than you don't need th- college yeah. to be successful. That's probably my second favorite subject is like, everything is so subjective. Right. Get out of this <laughs> mindset that everything is black and white. It doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. And I think organizationally, it's like, we don't, we don't like look at it that way, which I think is a problem, but we also don't teach anybody to be like aware enough to to even know that there's all that connective tissue there it's like we need to teach people that there's a ton of subjectivity in everything that we do and it's like it's okay to recognize that and it's okay to talk about it and oftentimes i feel like in in just like normal everyday problem solving you're gonna have a way better time like like you're gonna be a lot more successful when you recognize that stuff and and incorporate it into your daily calculus like in your daily conversations, interpersonal relationships, whatever in running your shop or, or whatever you're responsible for. It's like being aware of those things and being able to intelligently talk about them and, and having the willingness to talk to somebody about like, like, Hey man, you got pulled over and might've had a hard time with that police officer because you've got hold fast tattooed on your knuckles. And it's, it was four in the morning and you got to understand their experience and context. Like those police officers are out there and they're like, dealing with criminals and they start to paint this picture in their mind of what a criminal looks like. And so like when they pull somebody over they're like, it's exactly. just like a survival instinct on their part where they're starting to effectively profile people. And it's like, it's not fair and it's not hopefully that they can be detached and not do that. But you know what I mean? Like there's a subjectivity to everything. And it's like, just like you need to train cops to not do that. Absolutely. Like, and to recognize biases and everything else. It's like, you need to train sailors and leaders to understand that these things exist not just biases and and stuff like that but like the the subjectivity that exists in the margins and between the lines it's like you you can't just maliciously comply to the instruction and think you're going to be successful because like you were saying there's a lot more to it than that there's the ability to stand in front of a superior and conduct a brief there's the ability to like function within interpersonal relationships with your sailors and have them think of you as a human being like I had a sailor that uh, like a female submariner get a hold of me um, through Facebook Messenger last night, just venting to me about a, the mm-hmm. command she's at. She's having a rough time and um, talking to me and basically saying there's only me and a buddy of mine because she, uh, she was a, we had some female enlisted ride on my boat uh, for the last deployment that I did. And she was like, basically, there's only two chiefs that I've ever like encountered it, the, and it's you and this other guy that was on that boat with me that I feel like I can actually talk to you. Everybody else. It's like, it's just face punches and, or like they dismiss me or like blow me off or whatever. And I can't have a conversation. I can't reason with them. I can't explain what's going on. I can't do anything. And it's like, I feel like uh, there's a lot t- to that story about why, like she's just out of bad command. It, uh, like I, and I, I have like, detailed knowledge of what's going on there at a at a like is it can level evaluatively and st- i don't even know if evaluatively is the word but you know what i mean um like th- there's a lot going on there that could be just affecting morale and distracting them and everybody's probably pretty beat down but it's like they're they're having a hard time but also there's a lot of ineffective leadership going on too and it's like it frustrates me because i think there's probably a lot of chiefs out there that just have never been equipped with the tools they're just not aware of it and so they they think that they have to have this like artificial barrier between them and their sailors and they have to like act like chief all the time and it's just like what does that even mean number one and number two it's like chiefs are human beings it's like you're allowed to to form a connection with your sailors you're allowed to uh like tell them a story where you're a little vulnerable you're allowed to let them see that you're human it's 
and, and in doing so are communicating them to the, to them Absolutely. that you actually care about them. Like sitting there and, and listening and having a conversation and actually whether whether it's invalid or it's blown out of proportion or what like their feelings are never invalid but like if the point they're trying to make isn't isn't is like more of a they're just stressed out with being in the navy and don't quite understand how this works yet and they're having trouble with the stress involved in in right. adaptation or whatever it's like you sit down and listen to that because their feelings are valid no matter what because they're going through that and to them whether or not it's the structure of the thing that's providing that stress, like whatever that stressor is, like even if it's a, it's stressing only them out because they've never had to cope with that before and they just haven't learned the mechanisms and don't have the experience yet, it's still real to them. Like it's still real that that thing is is evil because it's like a stressor in my life or whatever, or that that's wrong or that process is wrong or how chief is approaching that or dealing with that is wrong or that you're you're tasking me with this thing is wrong. It's like it might not be wrong, but it might be the thing that's causing them stress. And so to them in their universe, it's that's the thing that's wrong. And so sitting down and and listening and having that conversation and being receptive to that instead of just telling them to shut up and call her because it's not wrong. It's like you're going to form a like a rapport with that sailor and a trust and they're just going to see that you care about them because you just because you're willing to have that conversation. All of that stuff I just spit out, I don't feel like is common knowledge. <laughs> like, I just don't feel like yeah. everybody understands that that's a thing they need to be doing all the time to be successful as a leader. And it's like, I don't understand why. It's like we have this weird, false idea of like what a chief is supposed to be or how a chief is supposed to be perceived. Almost like this fake it till you make it mentality where I'm pretending to be this caricature of a chief until... I figure out like I get my footing and I figure out what I'm supposed to do with my hands. And it's just like, it's just leadership. Yeah. I think too, like what I hear you saying, whatever, for whatever reason, this keeps coming up in my mind is this thought of like diversity. I'm a huge fan of diversity and I I preach about it a lot. And yes, I mean diversity by ethnicity and gender and all that stuff, uh, race, religion, color, right. creed, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, of course, yeah, but I'm yeah, also yeah. talking about diversity of thought. And so what I'm, what I mean with that is I want to embrace new yeah. ideas and I want to, uh, say that there's not this cookie cutter way to be a leader. There's not, you know, the, the way that I yeah. lead is com- right. my leadership there's style not. is diverse and it's different from yours. It's, it, it, there's, there's no way that we are the same leader. Now, are we both as effective? Right. Most likely. I mean, I've known you for a while now. I'm, I'm gathering that you're Probably. a pretty good leader. Yeah. I've never even seen you in uniform. You know what I mean? I like to think I'm all <laughs> right at it. I can just gather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Self-congratulating ourselves again, right? Breaking arms, patting ourselves on the back. Uh, but, you know, hey, I guess what right. I'm saying is like we, we have to embrace that diversity. You know, we have to embrace that idea that there may be a right. different way to do this. There may be a way that, you know, if we listen to someone yeah. that has an idea or they have a general concern that we should, you know, and that, that again, this should, this is something that you can't really get through a chief's board that we have right now. Uh, you know, you, you can't, yeah. there's no, there's no process to check on a person's ability to embrace diversity of thought. There, there's not, it, you can't, right. It, it takes, right. it takes a communication. It takes, like you were talking about, you know, sitting and listening to a sailor and, and, and noting that their feelings are valid, whether they're, uh, you know, uh, going to be validated as far as, you know, w- what the follow on action is, you know, that's a different story. But the fact that they're actually stressed out, that's a valid emotion that they're having. Right. right? And so it, it, can you effectively uh, listen? Right. Not not try to fix the problem always. Maybe you're just listening. Right. Maybe you're just a shoulder. Maybe you're just a set, you know, an ear. Right. right. All of this is like embracing some sort of diversity and there's no, you can't put that in an eval. I can't, I can't put, Hey, this guy's right. a great listener and, uh, or the, this gal uh, embraces diversity of thought and is open-minded. And because of that, the system in, uh, in place, uh, you know, or the, the way they, uh, lead their department or division is is truly creating again a meritocracy right how, how do you put that on an eval how do you put that in a package right. for a chief petty officer but like I, I don't know that i don't know that you can i think it's a conversation why? yeah yeah 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is like I feel like cause I, I go back to with eval writing and truth and reporting and all that. Like I go back to something Jason said to me about why he was talking about a sailor going up for an awards board. And he basically in the package, he's like, yeah, he doesn't do he doesn't have a bunch of collateral duties and all this other stuff. But like if I was going to go to war tomorrow, this is the guy I'd want with me. And I'm looking at it like as far as evaluating somebody's capacity as a war fighter. I would I would think we would want to do the same thing for leadership. And I feel like like in the same manner, I, I have a problem with my inability to write down someone's deficiency in block 43 without murdering their career. I also have a problem with like, why can't I write that down? I feel like at least for me, if I'm the one looking at that eval, like I want to know that they're a good listener. I want to know that they're really great at interacting with their sailors and they're the best like communicator I have. And, not like communicator technically if they're an ET or something like communicator as a leader, like in normal right. yeah. interpersonal communications. It's just like I I feel like I would care a lot more about that than I care that they organized a Christmas party. Like I don't I don't even care a little bit, man. Exactly. I looked at thousands of evals during that Chiefs board and I'm just like, what about this communicates anything to me that like you're more ready to be a chief because you ran an MWR. I, like, I don't, there's just certain things that I feel like while I, I commend them for uh, like doing those things, because like that stuff's important at a command. It's like esprit de corps, Christmas parties, like, or, or fundraising for a thing that does some function or whatever. Like there are certain things that I feel like are good and they should be rewarded in some way, but I don't think they should be reflected on an enlisted valuation. It is the primary source document for promotion. Like I would much rather see an evaluation by a raider that says they're a, a great listener or a great speaker or they're really great standing in front of the CEO and briefing or they're they're s- the best possible um, counselor of sailors like in a good way like or whatever like they're great at building teams right. all that kind of stuff I feel like there's a way to communicate that in an eval if we take out all, the, all of the just superfluous nonsense that ends up in block forty three. <laughs> Yeah, you know, another thing that comes to mind just listening to you talk is like, uh, and it'll it'll be relatable here, but you know, I'm I'm gonna take my my Navy hat off and kind of go into the civilian mode here. So as I was applying for jobs, right, uh, I said, you know, I'd go into each interview, and then towards the end of the interview, I would say, uh, you know, hey, look, I really want this to be beneficial for me, for my family, for my paycheck, for my future, for my retirement, all of, all of those things. I want it to work for me. And not a butt statement. And I want this to be beneficial for yeah. you and for the company, <laughs> right? For the for the organization. And if I'm not the right guy, that is fine. Like, do not feel obligated to hire me mm-hmm. at your organization because you think that you're supposed to, or you just need a quick fix, right? You need a you need a fill. You need a warm body, right? Please don't do that. If I'm not, you know, this job, you've been doing it for 20 years. I'm I'm just now exiting the military. Like I'm, I'm new to this whole thing. Right. So if I'm not a good fit, please do us all a favor. So I'm not beating my head against the drywall over here every day. If it's not a good fit, that's okay. Like, I hope you get the best possible candidate for this job. Right. Um, And and so what if we applied that to chiefing, right. Or LDOing or, Warrant officering, yeah. uh, you know, what if we apply that and say, hey, you know what? If I'm not if I'm not the right fit for this, please don't select me. <laughs> you know, like let me find yeah. a thing that yeah. I'm actually good at, right? And and do yeah. that because yeah. that is where people feel their happiness. That's where <laughs> joy comes from. Joy comes from right, you know, being in a role that you're actually good at it. You're like you're actually accomplishing right. what it, your, your, your skills, you're applying your skills and you're able to see the fruits of your labor. Right. And, and if, if that fruit is sour, even if you're collecting hundreds of bushels of apples, but they're all sour, what good is that? You know, I mean, uh, anyway, I, I kind of went yeah. on a tangent as you, as per usual, but, uh, yeah, I mean, know, I, my point is valid here. That, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just uh, like I'm thinking about like it, how you would even 
create a structure where it's like, if I'm not the right person for the job, don't select me. Like nobody's going to say that Mo- pretty much. Cause like everybody wants a promotion, like, cause they want to make more money. They want to take better care of their <laughs> Only- family. They want to advance in the organization. So like, I, and there's also like, you're never going to get away from a quota driven system in some regard. Like there's a spreadsheet yeah, somewhere in Millington that, where they sure. need X amount of yeah. chiefs on X amount of ships. So it's kind of like you, you, yeah need somebody doing that job but if we're going to represent ourselves as the organization that we do and evaluate ourselves based on these mission vision and guiding principles that's where i like we need to do a better job in my opinion is like it's edu- it's like we're we're setting this really high benchmark for ourselves and then we're not doing anything to reinforce it like really i mean we have the chief season which there's value in, but then, then what? Like, and, and they've added Absolutely. the ELD course since then. And I, and I'm a big fan of that. And I can't wait to experience that like as a facilitator so I can fully understand what it's all about. Well, but well, you say, like, we need, you say and we then need what? to do and the things argue, that equip people. No, maybe not, maybe not argue, but I would, I would posit that, you know, my, one of my favorite things that we can effectively do as leaders is communicate and and talk to other mentors. Right. So, and then what the, and then what is, then you reach out to people for help. Then you say, Hey, uh, master chief, I just made chief. Why don't you help me, you know, or can you help me please understand what the thought process is behind X, Y, or Z. Right. Um, that that's the, and then what the, and then what is you keep yeah. reaching out, you continually learn and you continually talk to people that can help you. That's the, that should be the end then what? Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I'm, I get, I always go back to the like formal leadership development and education. Like when are we going to create the structure required for, to set those people up for success? You know what I mean? Like um, when they're in those positions, it's like I, in going up for those promotions, it's like, I, I, I feel like we should be doing a lot more to equip them to be successful at all the things we've talked about. You know what I mean? Like that's the, I don't know, man. Like I, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of getting in this like circular thought process right now where I'm like, well, we've kind of already talked about this, but like, <laughs> I'm just like, it, it frustrates yeah. me all the time. It's like always in the back of my mind. Um, What do you like? Is, is there a way? Because I, I, a lot of times I associate it with life experience where, um, it, like, how, how would you go out and get wisdom? Like, is it something that you think is gained by just doing the normal stuff, like reading books and listening to podcasts and trying to like better yourself through some kind of educational process or tool? Or is it something that you feel like you need to put yourself in a certain position or go do a hard thing or, or you just have to wait until those experiences find you? Great question, man. Yeah, I think, uh, I think yes. Uh, you know, Continual learning is a huge part of gaining wisdom, right? So if you're listening to this podcast right now, you're probably already on board with that or, or you wouldn't be, you know, an hour deep with us on this subject of wisdom, right? So yes, continual learning is a huge part of gaining wisdom. And I think having some form of open-mindedness and learning from things that have happened to you or for you, I would say, uh, you know, not taking things for granted. That's how you gain wisdom. And keeping that open mind, keeping that, you know, uh, that, that idea that, you know, the, the, these things are processes that happen for you. Everything is a gift. You know, the obstacle is the way. So whatever struggle, whatever hardship, whatever challenge you've had was really just a gift for you to gain that hard earned wisdom, right? Your, your whole life story is a chapter by chapter Ooh. by chapter of hard earned wisdom. If you learn from it, if you didn't learn from it, you're not going to gain any wisdom. And even the people that maybe they had, you know, everything handed to them on a silver plate and and, and things like that, uh, I would say that is huge, is extremely important Ooh. to create your own struggle in some form or fashion. You know, do something hard on purpose that challenges you so that you can gain that wisdom, right? So that could be yeah. a workout, that could be a right. class that you take, that could be taking on a new challenge, a new role, a new responsibility, uh, putting yourself outside your comfort zone is a huge way to gain wisdom, right? Like doing a podcast, doing public speaking, the, that, that, right. uh, writing that article. Like if it weren't for Paul, I wouldn't have written that article. You know what I mean? But it put me outside of my yeah. comfort zone. Right? I'm, I'm dude, not saying I'm, I'm perfect. But far from it's it. It's on Go my life's to the last, list. Ep- last couple of episodes. You know, you'll know I'm not perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
do something hard on purpose. That's how you gain the wisdom, you know, sign up for something that's scary, yeah. man. Like that's. All right. And so, we're back. So we're back <laughs> after the, after Jeff's computer decided well, that, it wanted to eat it. I are both mates. So um, we, just, we, I, hey, you fixed it. You mechanically agitated it to the point where it submitted and said, I will now do my job. So. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, uh, so we were talking about, we left off. Yeah. We left off with you talking about the, how, like how we gain wisdom through action basically. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I was saying something to the effect of, you know, just setting some scary goal and putting yourself out there, right? Like getting outside of your comfort zone is probably the cleanest way to say, uh, that is the way we gain wisdom, right? Putting yourself out in a, in, in a situation that, uh, you yeah. know, is, is it's not in, inside your comfort zone. It's not something that you normally do. Right. Yeah, man. And that's like, we were talking about it, like, I, and I think I might have said it at one point, and I'll have to, I'll just edit around this, but like, but like the, you're not going to get the tools from a book necessarily, like you're going to get the, the tools you need to put yourself in that scary situation and then gain the wisdom from books and podcasts and everything else. But you're not going to gain wisdom necessarily from just studying a book or listening to a podcast or whatever. I mean, I guess there might be, there might be somebody out there that says something that resonates with you so hard that wisdom is gained, but I think you probably are going to gain it more from experience for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's any other real way to capture, but yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, any of these things, uh, now I'm getting, I'm delayed again, aren't I? Yeah, it is what it is, man. Let's just wrap this thing up, we'll, and we'll fi- we gotta get you a new laptop for next time, dude. Yeah, I'm definitely buying a new. I'm going on Amazon like right oh now. Oh my goodness, it's just that's probably all it is, man. Well, it's not. Good. I think we get. I think we covered a lot of good awesome. good ground, man. Like, well, we, thanks, uh, man. I hey, I appreciate yeah, you we, doing uh, this. Like, this lag is killing me. There's gonna be an editing nightmare on your end. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh my God. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, love talking to Jeff. Apologize for the technical issues, but uh, I ironed it out as best I could in editing. And uh, I just, the content was all there, man. I, I think that it was a valuable conversation. Uh, I, I like kind of getting into those places where it's almost like I don't know the answer and I like to work it out in the discussion on the podcast. I, I have fun doing that um, where it's, I have a question and I, and I want to answer it, but I don't, it's kind of like one of those weird subjective things where it's like you're, you're working towards a sort of solution or like a higher comfort level with a topic or the answer to a question where it's not like super definitive and objective. And I like kind of getting between those lines and, and talking about those things and trying, trying to work it out in my mind as I go. So uh, hopefully that was valuable for some of you. Um, some cool things coming, uh, working on setting some stuff up with some guests that, uh, I'll, I alluded to one of them, uh, that is pretty much done. We just got to pick a day, but uh, on the, on the next podcast, I, I kind of allude to it a bunch of times, but I'm pretty pumped about it just to get some of the questions answered that you have, have a Q and a that I solicited questions for on Reddit, uh, and social media. So that's coming some heritage stuff, some, uh, there will be an episode on my experience at the chiefs board. I don't know what that's going to look like yet because I have to be very careful, uh, with what I say and how I say it. So I need to kind of do some research and I'm probably going to have a couple people look at that outline before I do it. And then, uh, I have, uh, somebody that's going to be coming on board as a pretty regular, regular contributor doing more academic style leadership lessons you'll see what I mean when we get there, but there's a lot of stuff that I kind of got away from that I did at the beginning, uh, where I was addressing leadership development topics in more of like a formal educational manner. And I want to start kind of constructing a curriculum around that type of stuff. And, uh, I got somebody coming on to help me out with that. And, uh, so you'll hear another voice besides mine in the very near future. So I'm pumped for that because I've been wanting to do that for a long time. I would like there to be more contributors than just me not just in the interview or discussion style episodes, but somebody like besides me generating content uh, for the platform so that you're hearing from another voice with a different perspective and 
learning more things because that's kind of the whole point. So um, with that, if you need anything from us, hit us up. Don't give up the ship podcast at gmail.com. You can Facebook message us. Don't give up the ship podcast. Or you can DM us on Instagram or Reddit at DGS Podcast or just DGS Podcast on Reddit. We also have a sub. We're active in our Navy, et cetera. You'll see the episodes get posted in there and stuff. So uh, engage with us on Reddit if you're there. And then uh, if you want to support us, we got some stuff on the shop on the website, uh, just like stickers and some shirts and stuff. It's a way that you get something and then it helps us pay the bills associated with the platform uh, because there are bills. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you get some cool stuff, stickers, pins, uh, T-shirts, stuff like that. Uh, and that's it. That's what I got for you today. Thank you so much for listening and don't give up the ship. <laughs>